thank you again for being here this week and make a little report. I am very pleased with what has been accomplished here. And considering this is really the first meeting of its kind in Asia, I, I think you should all be proud of yourselves. In addition to being told what happened in public health and education and economic development and climate change and reconciliation, I got a fascinating summary of six themes which uh, I was told came out of all these meetings. One is this meeting needs to be viewed as a verb, not a noun. <laughs> Second, that business objectives have to be aligned with corporate social responsibility, which is another way of saying you will never have a sustainable economy unless it is also a profitable one. I agree with that. The third, with a bow to our friend Jeff Lee, is that there has to be a way to ensure mass participation. You cannot achieve the objectives you want on the contributions of millionaires alone with their money and retirees alone who have all their time free. The fourth is that inclusion is important. When people feel their differences are more important than what they have in common, in the extreme, you get what our friends in India had to endure in Mumbai. In the not quite so extreme, you get the political crises that have racked Thailand for the last several years. A particularly painful thing for us Americans because the Thais were our very first ally in Asia beginning in 1796 when we first got started. The fifth comment was, in a thousand different ways, you have demonstrated that the only thing that will give our children the future we want to leave them is a genuine partnership between government, business, and civil society. And finally, and, and perhaps most critically, there was a general consensus that people said over and over and over again that we cannot allow the current economic crisis to be an excuse not to go forward on all these fronts. The truth is that it should cause us to redouble our efforts to go forward on all these fronts. Does anyone seriously believe that oil will be under $50 a barrel the minute the global economy starts to recover at current usage patterns? The only way you can keep it at the current price is not to need it anymore. As a result of the commitments that you have made, listen to the consequences that will flow if all these commitments are kept. 715,000 children will benefit from better education. 260,000 adults will learn new job skills. Of these, 26,000 are teachers and 8,000 are healthcare workers. Over one quarter million girls and women will be empowered with better opportunities for sustainable livelihoods. Nearly 24,000 hectares of forest, hectares of forest land will be protected by empowering local residents to manage their natural resources. The equivalent of more than 40,000 tons of CO2 emissions will be cut. More than 700,000 people will learn to cope better with the environmental stress and natural disasters. More than 3.5 million people will gain greater access to health service. Half a million will now have safe drinking water and 400,000 children will get better nutrition. All told, just through this meeting, 87 members partnered on making about nearly 70 commitments to action, which have an estimated total value of $185 million, and which, when fully funded and implemented, will have a positive impact on more than 10 million lives. That's where we are today. As always, there are some people over here who are in the process of finalizing their commitments. So, when all of them are in, we'll let you know what the final total is in terms of people who will be positively affected. Thank you, and God bless you.